All right, so hello everybody. Welcome to the Library and Writing Center Secondary Sources Workshop. We are really excited today to be talking about some of the resources available to you if you are needing some secondary sources. So first off, we're going to introduce ourselves. Hi, my name is Carissa Powell. I use she, her, her pronouns. I am a student success librarian and I do a couple of different things, but I mostly work with first year composition students. My email is carissa at utk.edu and you are free to email me about just about anything. Hi everyone, my name is Grace Darrell. Um, I also use she, her pronouns. I am one of the online learning librarians here at UT Libraries. Um, and like Carissa, I also do a lot of things, but um, my main job is kind of twofold. One is creating online learning materials, and then another one is working with students. Um, again, like Carissa, my email is up on the slide. It's gtherrell at utk.edu. Feel free to email me with any questions or um, yeah, any, anything you need help with, feel free to reach out. Just to give you an overview of what we'll be doing today, again, there's gonna be about a 30 minute presentation and then about 30 minutes of Q&A. During the presentation portion, we'd love to hear from you over chat if you have questions about anything. So this is what we're gonna be doing today. So we'll be sharing, um, we heard from how some of you felt about research and some stressful feelings, some like unknowns, not really sure what it might look like. We will be defining some terms for everybody, learning where to go for research, what that might look like, and what it might feel like. We'll then wrap up to make sure everyone knows how to get help from both the library and the writing center after today. All right, so we wanted to start off with some definitions just because um, in libraries, we sometimes use words that um, librarians know what they mean, but it's not always evident what they mean. So we're just going to go over a couple of definitions for words that we're going to use today. Um, again, if you have questions about these, feel free to type a question in the chat. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what, what is a secondary source. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the term primary source. And there was actually a workshop recently on primary sources that you can go look at as well. Um, so a secondary source is basically just a resource that comments on, analyzes, summarizes, or interprets a primary source or other secondary sources. Um, examples of this are journal articles, um, literature reviews, book reviews, a documentary is another kind of secondary source. So a lot of different kinds of sources. And we're mostly gonna focus on journal articles today, but there are a lot of different types of secondary sources. All right, the next word we're gonna talk about is a database. Um, again, probably a word that you've heard a lot about. If you haven't, that's okay. You will, you will hear a lot about them in your time. Um, so a database essentially is a collection or index of different resources um, and within the database you might find full text of the resource you might find just a citation of the resource or sometimes you'll find an abstract which is basically just a paragraph that summarizes what the resource is about so a database can have um, all some or just one of these um, resources within it examples um, are academic search complete which is actually an example of one we're going to look at today um, also databases like JSTOR or Web of Science. There are also databases that work specifically with different kinds of um, resources like statistical data or we have primary source databases. So databases are not just for secondary sources, but those are what we're going to focus on today. And then finally, um, our last word of the day is a research guide, something else we'll talk about and something else you might have heard of. And a research guide is essentially a collection of information to help with research in a specific context. Um, that could be a specific discipline like English 
Um, that could be a specific class like first year composition. Um, so there are different um, kinds of context that you might find a research guide in. Examples are we have like a primary resource, a primary source research guide. We have a first year composition guide if you've looked at that at all. And then um, another example like that discipline specific would be like a psychology research guide, which just gives examples of um, kind of getting you started for research, gives you sample databases, journal articles, books you might want to read, things like that. So this is what it might look like if you are on our library's homepage, which is lib.utk.edu. We're just gonna walk you through what that looks like. And so once you get to our homepage to access some of the research guides that Grace was talking about, Amber has also put the link in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link is down below. Um, Right here is where you would click for your research guide. So you can click there and then get to a page that looks like this. You can both scroll through to look through some different subjects. Um, so you could go down to English or math, what have you. You can also type in right here what you're looking for. So if you know that you're in a first year composition course, you could type that in and hit enter, which would then take you to a page that looks like this. Um, this is a guide that was created specifically for students in English 101, 102, 118, 198, and 298. Um, so this is a really great place for you to go to kind of get a one stop anything you might need. On this page, it'll have both secondary sources and primary sources, depending on which one you're needing. Um, so since we're talking about secondary sources today, you might want to check out that secondary sources portion. It also has links to a lot of other things you might need for your assignment. So um, definitely maybe bookmark this one. I'm a little biased because it's my guide, but uh, there's also guides for any other class you might be in. The other place to go to get started looking for articles for your secondary sources is back on the library's homepage. So again, lib.utk.edu. And you would come over so I'm kind of in like the bottom left hand corner ish where it would say articles and databases. Very aptly named. So if you clicked there, you would then get to a page that looks like this. And this might be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of links on this page, but I would break it down a couple different ways. We have most popular databases that are, what it really means is they're good general getting started databases. Um, we also have databases by subject. So if you know you're doing something very subject specific, you could click there. Um, I would also recommend this general topics getting started page that is also really great. So there are a lot of different databases. I would maybe recommend not clicking on the complete list of databases. It's going to be really overwhelming. Um, and I would really much more recommend going through some of the more popular ones or the getting started topics. All right, so we defined terms um, and Carissa showed us where to go for when we start our secondary source research. So starting with the articles and databases page or starting with research guides, um, those are really good places to start when you're looking for secondary sources. And now we're going to transition a little into what the research experience looks like. So if you're just starting out, if you're wanting to find a basic secondary source or you're wanting to see what's out there, what is that actually going to look like in practice? So um, I'm pretending that we're starting from the articles and databases page, which you just saw. 
Um, and like Carissa said, there are lots of different options here for the type of database you want to use. Um, but we're going to look at Academic Search Complete. That's over on the left hand side of the page. Um, and this is like it, like it says, one of our more popular databases and it's interdisciplinary, which means that there are a lot of different kinds of disciplines that are going to be represented in that database. So you'll find secondary sources from a range of subject areas, not just like psychology or anthropology or um, business or something like that. So if we clicked on that, this is what our page would look like. Um, so this is what the page, this first search page for Academic Search Complete looks like. It's just some blank boxes. Um, if you've used a database before, this will probably look familiar to you. Um, it's also similar, like if you use OneSearch on the library's website, it's just a search box. Um, and that's generally how it starts. So you would insert your keywords into those search boxes. Um, you're welcome to put more than one word into that first box, or you can kind of separate out your terms and put them into each individual box. Um, and then you can see below there are some advanced search options. We're not going to go over those today, but if you want to do some more advanced searching, um, if you want to be a little bit more specific, if you have some more ways you want to narrow down your search, that's a good place to go for that. Um, but we're just going to pretend that we did a basic search um, for coffee and roasting, which will show up on our next slide. Um, so you type in your keywords and you hit search, and this is what the search results page looks like. Um, this is pretty typical of most databases um, or anywhere that you would go to look for secondary sources. This is kind of what it's going to look like. So it'll have your keywords at the top so you can remember what you were searching for, and then it's got this big search results page. So over on the left side, there are um, different ways to refine your results. So if you need um, a peer reviewed secondary source from a journal article um, or from a scholarly journal, you can limit just to that. That's an option. You can limit by publication date. Um, if you scroll down on those filters, there are also other options. So again, that's kind of a good way to narrow down your search if you're needing something maybe a little bit more specific or if you have too many results to sift through and you want a smaller number. Um, in the middle section there, that's where your main search results are going to be. And we'll look at one of those in just a second just to kind of show you what that looks like when you're looking for secondary sources. Um, but as you can see, all three of these are academic journal articles. Um, the search results, it's going to give you the title and then it'll tell you the authors. Um, sometimes it might have a preview of the abstract, but these don't. It gives you all of that kind of basic citation information. So authors, where it was published, um, the date, all of that good stuff. And then it also gives you some subjects so you can kind of maybe see what the article is going to be about. Um, and then if you see, there's also a find text button underneath the subjects. Um, that's going to tell you that you can click on that and it'll help you find the full text of the article. Um, and then if you see over on the right side of the page, um, we have a chat box embedded into the database, um, into a lot of our databases. So if you're on Academic Search Complete and you're looking for secondary sources and you're just hitting a wall or um, you want help evaluating a source or you're not sure what to look for next, you can actually just chat with us from the database and get help that way, which is really useful. Um, so we're going to pretend we clicked on the first section, the first option. Um, and this is what, this is basically what a search result looks like. Um, so you know it's a secondary source because if you see in that source section, it says it's from a journal, which is food chemistry, and it says document type article, and then it gives you the abstract, which is again, just a summary of what the source is. Um, so this will look pretty similar again in a lot of the databases that you're searching whenever you're looking for a secondary source. Um, so get familiar. <laughs> um, this will look this will look very familiar to you uh, when you start actually doing research or if you've already started doing research, you should um, you should kind of recognize this page. Again, like I said, this is going to look similar for different databases that you search. So um, whether you choose another one of those article databases on that articles and databases page, um, any of those databases will probably look very similar, will have similar functionality. Um, 
also if again like i said if you start maybe with one search on the library's website um, it will also look similar to this so kind of just giving you a feel for again what research is going to look like as you start researching and looking for those secondary sources so now that we have talked about the process of what some of these terms are where to go what it might look like I wanted to make sure we talked about what research might feel like and these are all like feelings that I have felt when I do my own research um, so you're not alone if you feel some of these feelings so some of my first feelings I feel when I start a research project is that I'm kind of like oh my gosh what am I doing where do I go I'm not sure where to get started we had a student that shared that it can feel a little stressful. And sometimes as I get into the research, maybe I'm just like, hmm, I'm not finding the things I thought I was gonna find or the things that I'm looking for. And so lastly, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I wasn't expecting to see that. Like sometimes you find things you weren't expecting. So all of these emotions are completely part of the research process and I just want to validate if you feel any of those feelings. Hopefully there will also be some positive feelings in there too, but um, it's definitely a roller coaster of emotions. So some of the things I talk about with students when we talk about feelings is that research really is this cyclical process. It's pretty rare that you will do one search and find the thing you're looking for. And so kind of just want to dispel that myth, that myth right now. Um, there's no such thing as a ideal, perfect search. Um, and it's really normal if you come up with the most beautiful search string of keywords and synonyms and then get zero results. So I just want to kind of throw that out there if that any of those things happen to you it's really part of the research process lots of very smart people have felt that way before and if you run into any of those walls that's completely okay it's part of the process and that's part of what um, we in the library and folks in the writing center are here to support you on breaking through some of those walls so i hope that you will lean on some of the resources and support you have available to you that if you really are just not having a breakthrough on either the writing or the research side of things that there's lots of people um, who would really love to help you out uh, that is my plug for our next workshop which um, is next week october 7th it's on what to do if you're in a research rut so if you're here or it's before October 7th and if you're feeling any of those feelings we have another workshop next week that will kind of walk you through concrete steps of what to do to break through that research barrier yeah please come um, next week it's gonna be it's gonna be a great time um, and also just as a reminder, I don't have this on the slide, but the previous recordings of the other workshops are on the library's um, YouTube channel and they're linked from the library website. Um, so um, I don't know if Amber wants to, wants to find that link or I can just pop it in. It's, this is not a pretty link, um, but this is the playlist for the other workshops that we had. So there's one about an introduction to the libraries, um, Power Notes, which is a tool um, for organizing your research, topic selection, and kind of an introduction to searching. And then last week was the primary source workshop. So those are all places for you to go um, to see other workshops if you would like to see um, and learn more about what was going on in those. Um, so these are kind of the ways that you can get help from the library later on. Um, you can always, of course, chat with us. Um, there are librarians on the other end who are waiting to help you. And that's what we're there for is to help with research. So if you're in a rut, um, if you are just getting started and don't really know where you want to go, if you need help developing your topic, whatever it is, um, we can help you with that. 
You can also schedule a consultation. Uh, we have a form specifically for that, or you're welcome to email a librarian. It can be your subject librarian. It could be Carissa. It could be me. Um, if you've got a librarian you already kind of know and want to work with. Um, so you can always do a one on one appointment with us that way. And then um, the other way is just to look at research guides. If you're just getting started, like we mentioned before, um, no matter what subject you're looking at, no matter what class you're in, we probably have a research guide for you and you can kind of start with those. Um, that's another way that you can get help as you're first starting out with your research. And now we're going to let the Writing Center talk about how you can get help from them. Thanks. Um, hi, I'm Kirsten Benson. I'm the director of the Writing Center and um, so many of the things that um, that um, have been discussed um, today are things that um, that we also can help you with. Um, so we have um, a variety of of um, links right here on this slide and I put um, our website link right there in the chat as well. Um, so especially that wall, you know, that uh, was mentioned, that place where things get a little overwhelming and you're thinking like, I can't find any sources or I don't know what to do with my sources or things like, um, I'm not really sure that I'm using my sources most effectively once I have found them. Those are all things that we definitely can help you along the way. Um, a lot of students think that the only time to get help from the Writing Center is when you have the project done. So um, just like as just like you can reach out to the um, to the librarians, you know, for help while you're in the process, you also can reach out to us um, for help along the way. And don't have to wait until you have that draft all, already finished. In fact, we are always saying like, get help sooner rather than waiting till the end. Um, so all of the information about how to how to get help from us um, is on our website that writingcenter.utk.edu. Um, I put also in there um, the link where we have our appointment scheduler and appointment portal, and that's that utk mywconline.com. Um, and that's something that you might want to bookmark because that's where you can go and actually make the appointment to work with us. Um, and that could be a video based appointment like this. It also could be um, an appointment where if you have a completed draft and you um, want you know, a little bit of feedback, you can, e you can get an email appointment that way. So all of those are described on our website and on that WC Online page. Um, and um, off of the Writing Center page, there's a link about how to make and attend appointments. And it kind of gives you a step-by-step -step instruction for you know, how to register for a free account on that WC Online, and then how to, how to make the appointment, how to show up for the appointment and everything. And um, I would say that um, one of the main things um, also is, um, and this is also in the chat there too, um, you can, if you have any questions at all, like oh, I'm not sure how to make an appointment or something like that, all you have to do is email us, writingcenter at utk.edu, and um, we try to be really prompt in responding to, to student inquiries. So uh, lots of ways that you can reach out to us um, and, and get help on, um, you know, like on, on things that you're working, working on. All right. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for that. Um, and now this is the end. We've reached the end of our workshop today. Um, so there is a session survey if you would like to fill that out. Um, you can also fill that out and get proof of attendance if you need that for your classes. Um, as we've already said, next Wednesday we're doing another workshop um, for when you hit a research rut. And that will be really useful. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what recommendations and what the discussion looks like because um, I hit research ruts. So um, really looking forward to that. And then again, if you want to see the full schedule of our workshops, you can find that on the website um, at that link there. So I think at this time, um, thank you all so much for coming and um, spending some time with us today. And now I believe we're gonna stop the recording and then move on into our Q&A period.